How's it going? My name is Joey Elbaum, and today we're going to be talking about the use of Jewish language in some Saturday Night Live skits, specifically looking at Drake's Bar Mitzvah and Coffee Talk with Linda Richmond. So, first, what are these two sketches? Well, this one on the left is the first one, Coffee Talk with Linda Richmond, which aired uh, from 1991 to 1994, was a regular segment, and Drake's Bar Mitzvah was a segment done when Drake hosted Saturday Night Live on January 18, 2014. So, what is Coffee Talk with Linda Richmond? Well, it's a series of sketches performed by Mike Myers, dressed up in drag as a stereotypical Jewish middle-aged woman with a classic New York accent, uh, recognizable as from celebrities like Mel Brooks, Jackie Mason, Woody Allen, and Larry David, um, a Jewish person in New York City. Oftentimes, Linda Richmond would incorporate this Yiddish, these Yiddish words into her speech. So we'll take a look at clips just to get an idea of what this was like. Paul Baldwin is the usual host. Who is the belt? Spilkus and his connected is on. He recovered. Was doing fine, schmeck as can be. When P.S., long story short, the Spielkitz came back. And Geg is into hey, he's back to square one, go figure. <laughs> now I'm getting a little bit clear. Talk amongst yourselves. So we see that in both of these short clips. There's a lot of Yiddish and Hebrew loanwords used, such as shpilkis, the exektigazoin, shmet, shpilkis again, and verklempt. This, now I'm getting a little verklempt line, is uh, the signature line in this Coffee Talk show. And now we can look at Drake's Bar Mitzvah, which also does the same sort of thing. It's of Drake, it's uh, Drake's opening monologue in the Saturday Night Live he hosted, uh, depicting his Bar Mitzvah with his uh, half black, half Jewish family, uh, and at one point he raps Haba Nagila, which is an Israeli folk song, and he creates improvised rap uh, to make up for those lyrics. So we'll take a look at that clip for as well, really fast. Thank you all for coming to Toronto for our little Aubrey's Bar Mitzvah. He's been working so hard on his Hap Torah and his Aliyah. Torah. Marrying a black. <laughs> That's what I get for marrying a black boy. <laughs> okay, everybody, get up your tuchuses and let's give a big mazel talk to a little Aubrey. So there we go. We see a lot of Yiddish and Hebrew loan words used in a very short sequence, just about eight or nine seconds each for this, these clips. We have Bar Mitzvah, Hav Torah, Aliyah. Those are all Hebrew words. Oeve is a Yiddish uh word used by a lot of Jewish English speakers. And then she says a black, with a kind of a New York Jewish accent, she says guy, but it kind of sounds like goy, referring to someone that is uh, non-Jewish, uh, that is not Jewish. And again, we have tukases and mazel tov, both Jewish words. So Jewish English includes hundreds of loan words from Yiddish, Hebrew, Aramaic, and many more. So it's very difficult to say that uh, Jewish English comes from a specific source. Um, there are many diverse backgrounds that are spoken different ways using these words. So looking at these two sketches, we can compare what is Yiddish and what is Hebrew in the sketches and kind of compare the origins of each sketch based on the time period they came from. So these are all the words, all the Jewish words found in Coffee Talk with Linda Richmond specifically in the episodes Mother's Day and Linda's New Boyfriend. And I put them in the chart showing the word, if it was Yiddish or Hebrew, or and then its meaning in English. So we can see the majority of all the words found in these videos is Yiddish, 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 Yiddish. And there's a few Hebrew words, a few that are both considered both Hebrew and Yiddish, but for the most part, all the loan words are Yiddish. And if you would like to see the definitions of those, they're here. When we compare this to Drake's Bar Mitzvah, however, we see much more of a diverse uh, language, or Yiddish versus Hebrew, but more so Hebrew, honestly. We can't say that there's more Hebrew, but we can definitely say there's less Yiddish and a more of a mix, which is interesting because 15 years later is when Drake's monologue came out compared to Coffee Talk, which uses a lot more Yiddish, whereas Drake's uses a lot more Hebrew loanwords such as mitzvah 
and Aliyah, Bar Mitzvah, all these words which just come from a different place. Continuing on, so we want to know, is this translanguaging or code switching? Well, first, what is translanguaging? It is using a second language uh, without error mixing into your primary language, such as incorporating Yiddish into English. So there is more Yiddish uh, or Hebrew, both skits, but both use loan words, incorporating this Jewish language into English. So here again, the definition is the bilinguals flexible use of language that goes beyond the socially constructed boundaries of the name. So in my opinion, this is code switching because the speakers, both the character playing Linda Richmond, uh, the person playing Linda Richmond and Drake, don't necessarily know what they're saying, the Yiddish, but they're able to incorporate the Yiddish and Hebrew into their uh, sentences that are predominantly English. So to me, it's code switching because they're able to jump from one word and switch right back to that English. So let's look at the language contact and the types of ways this language is put into these videos. So the lexicon, these are the words that are used, Yiddish and Hebrew, but they're more common in the Jewish English. For example, mensch, mazel tov, chutzpah. These are words that is often said in Jewish English conversations, such as, oh, he's such a mensch when you're talking to, about a nice boy. Looking at the phonology of the morphology, uh, a lot of the sounds will be changed to make them uh, make sense in English grammar and sound better. For example, tukuses, you wouldn't say that if you're speaking the actual Yiddish, but tukus itself, adding the ES ending, makes it make sense in English grammar. This is an interesting point uh, made by Kafferson saying how there are no VER prefix words in Yiddish. German has the VER, but instead of the VER, Yiddish uses FAR, where the klemp to them is kind of confusing because it's a Yiddish word from coffee talk, but there shouldn't be a V sound. So obviously the words are changed and altered based on how they can make sense and for Saturday Night Live's purposes be more funny. But it's an interesting point to notice. The semantics, does the incorporation of these words make sense in context? Yes, it does because in Drake's uh, Bar Mitzvah episode, for example, his mother's talking about the Hoff Torah and the Aliyah in the context of a bar mitzvah, which is two types of chantings done at a bar mitzvah. And finally, the orth orthography. How do words are taken and spelled in English differently than in Hebrew or Yiddish? For example, we see Hanukkah, which can be spelled in multiple ways. Here's just two examples of how that can be spelled. So when Jewish ancestors left Eastern Europe, many of their descendants only learned English and a lot of the Yiddish speakers uh, died out in Eastern Europe, Europe and they did not learn it in America. So now we just see Yiddish as a post vernacular language used in some, uh, some speech and just in little ways here and there. For example, we like to incorporate Yiddish and Hebrew in our modern day English. So both these SNL sketches incorporate a variety of Yiddish and Hebrew with the intent of comedy using Jewish language. So in Coffee Talk, this was po uh, possibly more Yiddish than, ha than had ever been spoken on American TV ever. And this came out in the 90s. This is just a great way to expose American people, both Jewish and non-Jewish, to the use of Yiddish and Hebrew loanwords, the way they can be incorporated in daily life and just still used today. So with that being said, both Drake's Bar Mitzvah and Coffee Talk with the Richmond are great ways of incorporating Yiddish into daily life and allowing a satirical aspect of life to come in to this presentation. There's the work cited. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed.